Good to have you back, sir. Thank you. It's good to be back on. So please, can you tell us more about your album Glory 5? You know, um, I heard you talking about Superstar. You said you are not a superstar and you are giving the credit to Jesus. I, 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 I don't know, the humility I saw there, can you just give us an insight about it? Well, I mean, obviously, um, the song Superstar is just trying to uh, redirect who should actually have the glory for whatever we turn out to be in life. I wrote that song in 1983 and uh, I first presented it at the Living Spring Music Festival in Ife um, at the uh, Obafemi Awolowo University. And when I sang the song, it was just with an acoustic guitar. It really caught the attention of people because uh, everyone was expecting to hear uh, what I was going to say. So when it got to the point and I said, Jesus is the one who made me who I am. Jesus is the one who gave me the songs I sang. And Jesus is the one who died to make me free. He is the superstar. The kind of applause that greeted that phrase, he is the superstar, was such an amazing praise and worship to the Lord. And I just felt satisfied that this is exactly it. And uh, I mean, uh, who should be taking the glory for really who we are? It is our creator. When he created us, he gave us an assignment. That assignment came with the ability to be able to execute the assignment. And when we begin to think that, you know, it is our muscles, um, either brain muscle or physical muscles that have given us, uh, you know, this abilities to be able to do these things, then, you know, it's all, you know, fallacy, it's falsehood. So uh, I've come to realize that whoever I am and whatever I will turn out to be in life is all credit to the Most High God. So he is really the superstar. Secondly, I wanted to also discredit the movie Jesus a Superstar that was done to depict Jesus Christ as a homosexual you know and that movie was released in the 70s I think it was in the 70s uh, Jesus Christ Superstar you know you know and uh, well, when I watched that movie I saw how terrible they tried to paint you know uh, the picture of my Lord and my Savior the one who delivered me healed me of a disease I was carrying for six years and I said no someone needed to counter this information and let the people get the right uh, the right perspective about who Jesus Christ really is and so uh, that's the second reason for writing and releasing that song Superstar. All right, so who is Dr. Panam Passiboy? Because even I, for one, when I was this uh, little boy, I was thinking um, if someone would have asked me, uh, do you know Dr. Panam Passiboy? Where is he from? I would have just quickly said, is he black American? <laughs> you know, can you just tell us who is Dr. Panam Passiboy? Where are you from? It's actually very interesting that, you know, from the beginning, a lot of people thought I was American. Well, maybe because uh, of my accent. Uh, which I've done everything possible to, to, to discard. Uh, I've tried to get this, uh, you know, Ask Amaya stuff out, out, of my, out of my tongue, but I mean, that was due to my upbringing anyway, uh, because I was raised up by the North American Baptist. Um, so my whole primary school was uh, affected by the American, you know, tradition and culture. And um, I wasn't born in America, I was born here in Nigeria, I was born in Kaduna. I grew up in Kaduna, Zaria, schooled in Zaria, schooled in Kaduna. And uh, when I was done with my initial, you know, uh, graduate studies, I moved over to Jos, uh, where I've lived for the past 35, 36 years. And um, uh, Panam is the second born in a family of four children. Um, I had an elder brother, Philip Paul Mokunga, who passed on some 17, 18 years ago. And uh, um, I have two younger sisters who are all into ministry. And my father was a military officer. And interestingly, he was my first music teacher. He started teaching me, oh yeah, he started teaching me music in 1961 uh, when he brought uh, an accordion from Congo 
um, during the you know the Congo uprising. And when he came back to Nigeria uh, with the accordion, he said to me, "Let me teach you how to play." And um, 1960, I'm sorry. So I started playing that, and then by 1961, he saw how good I was. You know, said to me, "Okay, I'll teach you to play the harmonica, uh, which is the, the mouth organ." So he taught me to play that, and when I picked the mouth organ, it became my instrument number one. And um, so noticing that I had this flair and this, you know, uh, aptitude, you know, a musical aptitude, he said, and then the best thing to do is to send you to a music teacher that will really teach you very well. So I was sent to one Mr. J.S. Kwan, uh, who trained my, my voice uh, and taught me to read and write music for five years. So uh, this is my musical uh, beginning. Uh, today I am married to my lovely royal girlfriend, uh, Tina, and we have uh, four children, adopted four, uh, I mean adopted six, inherited four, and uh, uh, so life has really been good. We have a lot, of, I mean we're just blessed with so many grandchildren. So sir, I, I don't know, um, the voice, <laughs> if I'm going to consider your age and um, listening to your song in those days and listening to it now, I, I suppose your voice should have been cracking by now, but the voice is still you know, sounding very good and sweet. What's the secret behind it? Well, that's the difference between uh, an amateur and a professional. Uh, as a professional, you get to have the knowledge on how to deal with your voice, how to nurture and nourish your voice so you don't get to lose anything at all. Um, everyone's voice is his identity and you never really get to lose your voice because it has a particular frequency, it has its dynamics, it has uh, its potency and um, it is mandatory for anybody who must be a good singer to really watch over and protect his voice. And uh, that's what I've done over these years. Uh, sorry, sorry. Does it have to do with what you eat? <laughs> well, uh, to an extent, not completely, but to an extent, yes. Well, you know, it has to do with uh, with what you eat. So I've been singing now for the past uh, 51 years, and I've never lost my voice. So right from the time I started, from 1964, when I started playing and singing in the club. Um, I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ and went into ministry in 1974. So from 74 till now, which is 41 years, um, I've never lost my voice. So interesting. So um, lastly, I just want to ask you, what will you advise the upcoming artists, those who aspire to be like you? Um, the difference here is uh, knowing what is an artist, who is an artist, and who is a minister. Um, um, I stand to differ that I'm not an artist, I'm a minister. Um, other people who are artists behave like one. Uh, to be an artist or a music artist is actually to be one who uses his gift to bring amusement. And I don't bring amusement, I bring answers as a minister. I reach out to people to be able to change their circumstances. I reach out to their hearts to be able to bring answers to their situations, to give them a hope, a sense of direction in life. Uh, artists don't do that. Artists simply focus on themselves. Whatever they do is supposed to bring benefit to themselves. But what I do is not to bring benefit to myself, but to bring benefit to the person who listens to me. And that's the difference between artistry and ministry. And so uh, to the upcoming music minister, I would say you need to really build a beautiful relationship with God because that is the beginning and the end of the whole aspect of ministry. Uh, you cannot minister unless you have received the ministry. You, you wouldn't know how people ache and uh, how, how, how painful certain situations are in people's lives. If you think that you want to sing and, and bring about answers to people, then you need to really get involved with the creator of that person. He is the one that will tell you what is going on in that person's life and give you the answers so that when you say a word or sing a phrase, it will just appear as if 
you really, really sat with that person. In fact, it will look as if you, you are really prying into that person's life to be able to sing uh, those words that really mean so much to them. So I would say, if you want to be an artist, I leave that to you. But if you want to be a minister, then I'll say, walk on your relationship with God. However, you cannot divorce artistry in music. So what we do as music ministers is we also work to become so proficient musically, whether it is singing, whether it's, it's you know playing any of the instruments, you learn it as if that is what your life is, is, is hanging on. And so when you have both, you know, right at, at your fingertips, then you, you, you become uh, one to be reckoned with. So nobody would see you and just think, hey, you're just a novice, you're just doing this thing um, out of the flair just for pleasure. No, but you're doing it as a professional, as one who really knows his onions. Finally, finally, sir. I was told that you were in a program and um, after ministering in that program, you made a statement, you talked about movie, that uh, you're going to be involved in movie. Can you tell us more about that? <laughs> well, um, uh, the gift of music and movie making, they're probably you know, tied together because uh, songwriting is actually storytelling. Uh, just like movie making is storytelling. So, um, yes, I've written quite a number of scripts. It will interest you to know that Bring Down the Glory 2 is actually a movie script. Uh, Glory 3 is a movie script. Master of the Universe is actually a movie. So I just took the, the songs from the movies and released them. Uh, but I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, putting my acts together and, you know, getting into... Uh, making the movies of all these albums and of course even much more uh, so certainly yes I'm going into movie making so it's been nice talking to you sir, on Pan-African television you're very welcome Pan-Africa thank you very much sir. you just do us a favor you just do us a hype on Pan-African television I'll leave it to you sir hello my name is Dr. Panayam Percy Paul and stay tuned to Pan-African TV